<laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, I would like to ask you a question first. So, raise your hand if the answer to this question is yes. If money did not exist, would you still get up every morning and do what you do for a living? Great, about 10% that, that, uh, that, that 90% of the people, according to a survey made in the US, answered no, that they would do different jobs that they are doing today. So I come from the lucky club of this 10% of people that I'm, that I'm doing what I really love. I, it took me just a second when I, when I read this question to know that I am doing what I want. And, uh, I think that if I believed in reincarnation, I was, I'm pretty sure that I was doing this in my previous life as well. <laughs> so, what do I do? I'm an e-commerce lover, I am a hard worker, some of my friends would say workaholic maybe, and I really believe in knowledge. All of you have emphasized knowledge, so I really believe in knowledge. My educational background is in e-business. I'm currently doing my PhD in the subject of e-commerce, and uh, I am co-founder and CEO of the leading e-commerce website in Macedonia that revolutionized the e-commerce market, Grouper.mk. So how I started Grouper, or um, how I became an entrepreneur, because to be honest, I never dreamt, uh, I have never dreamt to, be, to become an entrepreneur. But while I was studying at the university, I, I applied to every possible workshop that I could do to get more knowledge on different topics to see what I want to do. Then I, would, uh, I was really competitive, so I, I attended a lot of competitions. I would get somewhere third prize, somewhere second prize. Uh, I would win at drinking games even, because I was so competitive. <laughs> and, and the prize that got me to open my company was actually uh, this competition when I got first prize of uh, the most innovative business plan. And uh, when I say I got prize, I got funding. I know that a lot of digit number might come to your head, but it was a 5,000 euro price that seemed a lot at that time, so this was really an incentive to start my, my own company with, with, two, uh, with two partners, which are, by the way, beautiful and men. <laughs> uh, so, uh, because I'm, I'm here to speak about the challenges, I don't have much time to, to uh, I, I, uh, I guess I will need three days to, to share the challenges that I have faced in the previous five and a half years, but I would like to, to, uh, to share with you a bit of the opportunity of how I, I have seen and discovered the opportunity to start a business. So when it comes to attitude towards opportunity, there are two types of people. Um, one group is the ones that are endlessly waiting for an opportunity to come to them. So they sit and wait and they end up doing things that they don't want to do because they're too afraid to take risks. And then we have the other group of people, which are the ones that are creating the opportunities for themselves. So when it comes to creating opportunity in an emerging market, you might say that it is pretty difficult, maybe more difficult than a developed economy, but I would not agree. Maybe running business is more difficult because the processes are not that smooth, we don't have a legal framework, we have some administrative burdens, but when it comes to opportunity, it is, it is really simple and it's really easy. Because there are so many models, business models that are proven and that work so well in developed countries, that we only have to discover, identify the market needs, and adapt those models to bring them on our market. So the innovation can be bringing a new model that is not existent in our country, so that's practically what, practically what we did. But however, in 2010, when we were starting Gruber, the opportunity was pretty shabby. Most of my friends with who I shared the idea, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna change the e-commerce market in Estonia, or like, yeah, you know, the market is not ready. This is not like more of an opportunity, but it's a, it's a problem. Because less than 1% of the population was buying online. The number of active payment cards was, were low. We are a society that highly relies on cash, so we would get our salary, get from the ATM, and then use cash to pay for things. Then there were security concerns. People were not, did not have habit to buy online. But if you address these issues correctly, because Grouper is daily the site that offers high discounts and savings for people, if you really see this as an opportunity, I was not planning to address and offer, uh, uh, offer the people 
convenience and saving time and you won't wait in line because you cannot do that in a country, in a time of recession, where people uh, appreciate money over time. And uh, so we won't, you, you, uh, you won't get excited, you won't get people excited if you tell them you will save time and you, this is convenient, this offer convenience online buying. So we offer savings and high discounts, which was we proved to beat all these other uh, threats or limitations on the market. So we, after five years, or maybe after two years, we, we uh, I got a lot of calls from the uh, press, from the media, and they told us uh, recently we got a very good uh, abbreviation, a game changer on the market of the e-commerce. So we really, we really induced changes, and we really changed the e-commerce market. And on the way, on the way of change, on the way of uh, doing business, there are also a lot of things that have to be done. So again, maybe I'm labeling, but these are two groups of people as well. Most of you, I guess, will find it the second group. So when it comes to doing things, there are two people according to the perception of doing things or the attitude toward doing things. These are the postponers, the first group. They, they have this box in their mind, like an empty box. And there are things that you have to do but you, you keep piling them in the box. So I will do this tomorrow, and as you keep piling and piling and piling things in the box, they, the more you start to hate those things, and you're like, oh, this is so stupid, I have to do these things. I don't like to do these things. And you keep complaining to yourself, and complaining to other people that there are things that you don't, you cannot do. Oh, at work, you know, I have to do some reports. And so, so you keep complaining and complaining, and the box is piling, and you lose one uh, time, and time is really precious. And then we have the other, the other uh, uh, group of people, which are to-doers. They don't think too much. They're just, they don't have the box. They don't need the box. They just, uh, oh, th this, is, this needs to be done? Okay, get it done. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I don't know how to do it. I'll learn how to do it. That's not a problem. So these are the doers, and I encourage you more if you found yourself in the first. If you have this box, just throw it up. The, the empty box for, for the first owners. And there will be obstacles on the way. So this big stone, I will use metaphorically as a stone, but it can be anything standing on the way. So it can be marketing issue, something that is not familiar to you. It can be a uh, legal issue. We had problems with the law of e-commerce, so I was, I was really excited when I got an email five months ago that they're changing the law for e-commerce after two years of lobbying. Uh, so there will be obstacles, but let's just for a second take this stone as, as it is a stone. So you have to pass through the stone, and if you want to pass through the stone, you have to, I don't know, dig a hole, or maybe you can climb it, or maybe you have some friends that work in construction and they will come and help you, or maybe you have some strong friends that will come and push the stone. So whatever it is that you do, you have to pass the stone. And if the stone is not here, if there is not an obstacle, then I am sure that this path that you're going doesn't lead anywhere. So, let's say you don't have friends. You don't have friends who work in construction, you don't have strong friends, you cannot do your calls, so the only thing that you can do is to climb the stone. But you're not a climber. So I guess what you have to do is be a really quick, big best learner, go and take classes for climbing, come back and climb the stone. So that's the metaphor in business and in applies as well. If there is something that you, you, you don't know how to do, just Learn how to do it and do it. Because learning new things, after you overcome the stone, you might say, I don't, I don't uh, need to know how to climb. But when you come over the stone, <coughs> you will be more self-confident, as uh, Mr. Was, uh, Ed was mentioned before. And you will be more knowledgeable. And this, this uh, thing that you will learn, you might apply it to another field, which you will need tomorrow. So if there's a takeaway from my talk today, I, I really hope that it is the following things that you will take. Embrace knowledge every minute, every hour, every second of the day, everywhere, and don't isolate yourself from things that you hear and you're not interested at the moment, because you're more interested to not think about anything. So embrace knowledge everywhere, because you will really need it and you will apply it in another field, maybe. Don't sit and wait for an opportunity, create an opportunity. So, I'm here because I created the opportunity to talk to you. I, am, uh, I, was, I was speaking this year to about 20 events, but I was, I, oh yes, first I wasn't divided to, 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 to speak to this event. But I'm like really excited for e-commerce, and I saw this Estonia 2025, Viljana 
send me a message on LinkedIn. And I said, oh, are they, are they gonna talk for e-commerce? Let me check. And I'm checking the agenda and I'm like, oh, they're not gonna talk about e-commerce, so it's not in the agenda. But then I got a call uh, to go to Geneva and uh, discuss the, the, e, the aid for e-trade in February about, uh, about the emerging countries, how the e-commerce will be developed. So I was, I was really happy. But I wanted to invite, here's my message, Binano, Binano, hello, I really congratulate you about this event. Is an e-commerce going to be in a topic? And by the way, I mean, I'm this and this and this and this and this, so maybe you can include me somewhere there. <laughs> And she said, yes, we, we want to include you, and uh, we will be delighted to have you talk here. So thank you very much for that invitation thank and for creating the opportunity. <laughs> so third point is be self-confident but modest. Be self-confident but modest. Why am I saying this? Because I, I see lots of people who are overwhelmed with self-confidence but are like empty boxes. They're not even the postponer box, but they're the empty box. So, if you, want, if you want to be self-confident, you have to really be knowledgeable, but then again, it's really good to be modest. And invest in yourself, because as was, as was mentioned, talent, talent comes naturally, but skills can be developed only with hours and hours and hours of working on yourself. And last but not least, be fearless and use your potential. Use your potential to the maximum. Don't spare your brain, your memory. Don't fear yourself at all. Just use your potential to the maximum. And my final message, if you want to do something, then work for it and do it. If you want to be successful, then be successful, regardless if it's opening your own company or getting a promotion in the company that you're working for or whatever it is. Thank you. Thank you.